What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Penny. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so there is a nice refresh for the 2022 Tiguan, hence the reason we are in it today. Several new interior upgrades actually as well. And did you guys know there's actually a third row available for the Tiguan as well. Not everybody knows that, so I always like to mention that. And so with this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering wheel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Tiguan. First one being the S, starting at $25,995. Then there is the SE for $29,495. SER line black, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $32,295. And lastly, the SER line for $36,595. So that last trim level actually comes standard with all-wheel drive, but if you wanted to add all-wheel drive to this first three trim levels simply add fifteen hundred dollars then but regardless of trim level that you go with power plant is going to be the same powering this beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 184 horsepower at 4300 rpm 221 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.1 seconds which we will of course test out in a little bit here but mpg numbers then coming in at 23 in the city 30 on the highway for the front wheel drive 22 city 29 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our new tig one i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes so there's actually a circular dial located directly behind the shifter giving you a ton of different drive modes the way it works is the on-road drive modes is going to be accessed through simply pressing down that mode button and when you do that you're going to have normal sport eco and individual but then you have your off-road drive modes which then you just turn to the left or to the right that circular dial so if you turn it to the left you got snow you turn it to the right you got some some off road drive mode. So that is how the drive mode circular dial there is going to work. But essentially, what it does is adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, steering sensitivity, climate control settings, and all wheel drive system engagement, then as well. So now, having gotten all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test. I am going to put it in this uh, sport driving mode. There we go. It did immediately downshift for me. And oh, best part, you guys, it adjusts the digital gauges as well we'll get more into the gauges later but they are digital and they do adjust substantially especially the color when you change drive mode it's pretty stinking cold but anyways let's go ahead and find that straight away let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get the new tiguan up to speed all right this looks like a straight away you guys and three two one go that's how we do it <laughs> you know what 9.1 seconds isn't the quickest zero to 60 time i'm just going to be honest but that felt fine I definitely don't think you're going to have any issues merging onto the highway. That was plenty of an acceleration, so perfectly fine for me at least. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, as I just came to a stop sign there, it's perfectly fine. I'm still in sport drive, man. This thing just wants to go, man. Anyways, braking feel is perfectly fine. I would say it's probably on the firmer side of things which i actually prefer so 100 percent braking feel is definitely on point here in the tiguan as far as suspension and handling goes up front you're going to get a strut type front suspension in the back independent four link rear suspension as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine so far at least on my short test drive here in hanover and actually here's a little bit of rocks and stuff yeah it's fine i have no problem with the ride quality here in this thing as far as steering feel goes i will say it tends to lean on the looser side of things which I don't prefer, I will say, let me actually go ahead and put it back in sport driving mode here just to test it. Yeah, it's an immediate difference in the steering feel. You put it in that sport driving mode, it's a much heavier feel to the steering, which I personally prefer. There is a custom driving mode, like I was saying as well. What I would do with that custom driving mode, quite honestly, is tailor the steering sensitivity to that sport setting so you have a much heavier steering feel. 
but then I don't want that ex instant acceleration all the time because you don't need it in this type of a vehicle. So that's the way I would do it, keep it with the heavier steering feel, and that kind of gives you a little bit of customization there, which I would like. But if you're not in that sport driving mode, I will say the steering feel is definitely on the looser side. But anyways, touching on cabin noise, let's go ahead and get up to like, I don't know, 50 miles per hour or something. I just want to see if there's any wind noise coming into the cabin. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. It's all right. It's not bad. I've heard worse. Definitely not that bad. It's a pretty serene cabin here in the new Tiguan. So definitely no issues there. The touching on visibility, I can see, wow, these headrests are definitely up a good bit right now. So because of that, I can't see all that great, but I should have pushed them down before I started driving. And then I would probably be able to see perfectly fine. So having said that, if you push the headrest down, you should be perfectly fine when it comes to visibility. I did not even check that before I started driving. So yeah, that's what I got going on right now. And I did want to also mention to you guys, rain sensing windshield wipers do come with the SE trim leveling up. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Tiguan detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you got to worry about so you can better focus your attention on enjoying the drive in the new Tiguan. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan. All right, here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Volkswagen Tiguan finished in platinum gray metallic. Definitely a very cool color on the Tiguan, especially with the black accents. But this is, by the way, an entirely new front end for 2022, in case you weren't already able to tell. Our redesigned headlights up front, it kind of continues on to the side of the vehicle. Illuminated grill lighting is also available for the SELR line. We don't have that today. That would be pretty cool. We do have the R line black, which is why you got the little R insignia within that front grille, which is pretty nice. But a lot of black accents, of course, as well, because of that. But including on on the front fascia let's go ahead and start up front here gloss black accents because we have the r line black found on the corners there just around the front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination as well as on the grill there too led headlights with led daytime running lights coming standard for all trim levels across the board they do come with the automatic feature as well meaning when it starts to get dark at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there you actually get adaptive front lighting if you were to go with the sel r line that's pretty cool essentially the way that works is when you're going around to bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating than what is around that bend kind of a safety feature in itself there but pretty much rounds out the front again like i said a newly refreshed front end for 2022 definitely looks good but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the take one all right so now since we are around to the side of this one let's go ahead and start up top roof rails do come standard for all trim levels across the board when it comes to those window surrounds they're either going to be finished in chrome or black depending upon which trim level that you go with and since we have the r line black today all of our accents, of course, are going to be in black, but accenting on the front fender as well, and specifically with the R design, you do have the R logo found on that front fender. Actually, it's on the driver's and passenger's door, but the accents start on the front fender. I'll put it that way. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for all trim levels, by the way, and LED integrated turn signals also coming standard. But like I said, since we have the R design black, our side mirrors are not going to be body colored they will be black of course that makes sense i'm going to also mention when it comes to the side skirts because this is something that always bothers me a little bit matte black side skirts will come on all of the non r-line trim levels so since we do have an r-line trim level we do have the body colored side skirts which i personally prefer it gives it a lot more of a high-end look looks better in my personal opinion at least but if you were not to go with one of those r-line trim levels then it will be matte black actually but then take a look at the wheel configuration 17 inch alloys coming with the s 18 inch alloys with the se and 19 inch alloys then for the se r line black and then 20 inch alloys yet again for the sel r line so we do have the 19 inch alloys in case anybody was curious but pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the tiguan all right so now since we are around back of this one of course we have a gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you do have some tiguan lettering spelled out horizontally always looks good back there led taillights do come standard for every single trim level across the board gotta love that the four motion badging that's going to be if your tiguan is equipped with all-wheel drive 
of course we have that today. As far as the exhaust goes, Volkswagen would kind of have you believe that they are integrated into that bottom portion of the rear bumper, but these are, these are fake, of course. They're, they're actually located underneath. There are dual exhaust outlets, but they are tucked away. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. Right, so now since we are around back of the Tiguan when it comes to opening that rear tailgate there are a few different ways to go ahead and do that and by the way it is a hands-free power tailgate for the SELR line and then power tailgate is available for the other trim levels but there is a button of course on the tailgate itself there's a button on the key fob and there is a button on the driver's side door then as well but so then once opened up when it comes to cargo capacity i'll give you the three row numbers first and then the two row that we have today if you were to go with the three row configuration for the tiguan behind that third row comes in at 12 cubic feet if you have that folded down 33 cubic feet and then with all rows folded 65.3 cubic feet but for the two row configuration 37.6 cubic feet behind that second row and then 73.4 cubic feet with that second row folded flat so a little bit more space because you don't have that third row if you were to go with the two row configuration like we have today but I did want to mention to you guys within that cargo area you will find of course cargo lighting but it's not just regular it's led cargo lighting you don't always find that so i did want to mention that there is a cargo cover available there are grocery bag hooks back there as well which i always like to see there's a little bit of uh indent storage on both sides in the very back which I thought was pretty cool then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire with a little bit of storage maybe you can store some things in there then if you wanted to but then making our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 27.9 inches for the three row configuration so if you go with that third row that's what you're going to get but for the second row either way that is going to come in at 38.7 inches so for reference I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in that second row. Rear ventilation is going to come standard. There is one USB charging port and one 12 volt power outlet if you were to go with the SE trim level and up. And of course, you will find a rear center armrest with cup holders then coming standard back there as well. But then making our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating with the S trim level, eight way power driver's seat with four way power lumbar for the SE trim level and up. VTEX leather at seating for the SE trim level and up. Heated front seats then for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love that because you usually don't get that with other manufacturers. The fact that it comes standard for even the bottom trim levels, so that's pretty cool. Overall, seats were plenty comfortable. I had no issues in my test drive here today. Then take a look at the steering wheel because it is actually pretty stinking cool. Tilt and telescoping, of course, and it telescopes out a decent amount. We'll say that as well. Leatherette wrapped for the SE trim level, but leather wrapped for the R-Line trim levels. And that, of course, is what you're looking at right now. And I love the flat bottom because we have the R-Line and the little R insignia towards the bottom portion of that steering wheel as well. So it's a pretty cool steering wheel. And the 10 to 2 grips are definitely on the thicker side, which I always prefer. Then making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Volkswagen logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock, the button pop the rear hatch. And then that times two button is going to be a remote start, which comes on the SE trim level and up other than that there is a push button start located just in front of the shifter that comes with all trim levels across the board so i'm just going to put my phone on the brake and press that engine start button and so once started up like i was mentioning to you guys there is a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard and so my favorite part about these gauges is when you adjust the drive modes it does adjust the colors of the gauges substantially so if i were to put it in that sport driving mode everything is all of a sudden red. If you were to put it in eco, it's kind of like this cyan light blue color. Then the normal driving mode is a dark or royal blue color. So a few different colors, depending upon which drive mode that you put it in. So I thought that was pretty cool. Did also want to mention if you push the view button on the right side of the steering wheel, you do have a couple different configurations you could choose to display up there as well. There is your standard tachometer with the digital speedometer. There's also just a flat out digital speedometer with some driving statistics. And then there is your traditional speedometer with the digital speedometer within it. So 
I like that you're able to adjust that as well. It's pretty stick and cool. So Volkswagen did a wonderful job with the gauges on this thing. And that 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster comes standard on every trim level as well. Just like the Volkswagen Taos actually. So pretty cool. But so they make your way to overall interior quality, you will find a panoramic sunroof for the R-Line trim levels. And so therefore I'm able to show that to you guys today. It's gonna to be optional on the SE if you wanted in on that one. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors we have here. That's pretty cool. There is a compass in the upper right hand corner as well. There are 15 colors of ambient lighting if you were to go with one of the R line trim levels, and that could be adjusted through the infotainment screen. Also, very nice dual zone climate control coming standard. And there is a wireless phone charger if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, and that's going to be located just in front of the shifter. So you just have to have a smartphone compatible with wireless phone charging, and you're good to go. But overall, as far as interior quality goes, I really like the contrast stitching found on the doors with this cool kind of L shaped design there also is a carbon fiber ish look it's definitely plastic but it looks like carbon fiber found on the doors and then just above the passenger side glove box as well I'd like that just in front of the shifter you do have that wireless phone charger but you also have two regular phone charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet to the left of the shifter you have an electromechanical parking brake behind the shifter there's a little bit of storage dual cup holders and within the center armrest you have a little bit of storage there as well and actually there's a little bit of rubberized storage just above the infotainment screen there too. I almost missed that, that's pretty cool too. But overall, I think the steering wheel and the gauges really make the interior for me. The digital gauges and the thick grips on the steering wheel, it's just a very nice setup. Anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the S trim level. Then if you were to go with the SE and up, you will find an eight inch color touchscreen display. Comes with Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay for all trim levels, but, if you were to go with the SE trim level and up, you will get wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay, which is what you want, because then you don't have to connect it via USB cable to get that free navigation up on the infotainment screen. You just simply set your phone down on the wireless phone charger and you got wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. That's the one I absolutely love. But factory navigation system coming with the SEL R-Line. Fuel and weather information you can check out up there. Also your radio information as expected. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, six speakers is going to come standard, but there is a nine speaker Fender sound system coming with the SEL R-Line. That is not the one we have today, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and turn to the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out this six speaker sound system that we have here today. It's okay. It's definitely not the best. I would definitely recommend the Fender sound system for the Tiguan, cause I don't know, not a whole lot of bass. The bass was okay, but it's not the best. The clarity was just not there for me, unfortunately. But I'm just being honest. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Tiguan in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. And it is gonna beep like it's doing right now if I get too close to this curb here. So it's kind of letting me know not to run it over. But as always, I'm gonna stop that. That is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS top safety pick for the 2021 model year, typically with vehicles, they only get better over time. So I would imagine it would at least be that when they finally get around to testing the 2022 Tiguan. Front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming with the SE trim level and up will include a forward collision mitigation system, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, autonomous emergency braking adaptive cruise control and then lane keep assist as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the tiguan the ambient lighting is great digital gauges are wonderful i like that these gauges you can adjust more than just the colors but the actual display as well that's so sticky cold nice refreshed look i really like it i knew jesse the manager here said he likes the new back end i like the new front headlights i think they look good too as far as room for improvement goes the only two things i could really think of is possibly a little bit more power you're probably not going to care in this type of vehicle though quite honestly and it is enough to merge you onto the highway but 9.1 seconds isn't the quickest to 60. The only other thing I can think of is just around the shifter here, there's a lot of hard plastic. Wouldn't have minded if Volkswagen at least gave that plastic a nice design to it, maybe like a little checkered pattern or something, anything. Just more than just a regular matte black plastic, that's all I'm saying. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Tiguan in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. 
do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.